Um, and we're gonna go through my workshop, have a look uh, at where everything happens, uh, what's what tools are used for what purposes, and, and things like that. Uh, and also wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that we're having a bit of a restructure here. Uh, the psychologist has merged, as I mentioned in my last video, with my previous website, which is ashtontracy.ca, uh, just under my name. It was becoming a little bit difficult running two websites, um, uh, dealing with you know two sets of emails and things like that. But rest assured, we are still very deep in the Seiko game, uh, but also we restore plenty of other uh, watches. We specialize in vintage, Omega, Rolex, Tudor, um, vintage chronographs, Breitlings, you know, um, pretty much any military watches, old vintage Longines, Longines military watches, uh, anything like that. So we are still very much into the Seiko business, um, but we're just gonna be broadening the YouTube channel to include uh, other brands, uh, other videos that I've uh, had on a different YouTube channel that I'm going to merge over uh, to this channel. So uh, I hope you enjoy the workshop tour today and I uh, hope you enjoy the videos that I'm continually posting uh, and hopefully as well you like the fact that we've broadened the horizons a little bit to encompass uh, the greater horological world. Um, yeah, so uh, let's start the workshop tour. So here we are in the workshop. Uh, it isn't big, but it does the job. We've got everything here that we need. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So let's start from the left and work our way around. Uh, very important, we have a coffee maker there uh, for when we need to have that caffeine hit. Uh, over here on the left, we have my lathe. Um, this is an eight millimeter watchmaker's lathe uh, with a variable speed drive motor. Um, it was actually designed for the small watchmaker's lathe um, and it's a great little piece of machinery. Uh, at the moment we're set up, we have the faceplate in the lathe, uh, and we have um, a, a cutter or a drill bit, which is used for drilling out the main plate so that we can put the lower mainspring arbor um, bushing or jeweling, jewel into the main plate. It's also used for various other bushing purposes. Uh, I recently just bushed a Breitling on there that you might have seen on my website or on Instagram. So that's the current setup that we have in the lathe right now. Uh, we have watchmaker's vice, uh, which if we need to put anything in the vice, we need to file any parts, polish anything, that's where it's done. Uh, and this is like a general uh, dirty working bench. Um, here we have the accessories for the lathe. We have a compound slide, uh, which is used for, it's mounted on to the lathe like so. And then we use that for um, uh, cutting and various operations that we need to use uh, for fine uh, fine increments. Uh, we have other various cutters that are used for the compound slide. Uh, we have um, our um, center finder for when we want to find center. And we also have uh, a T-rest. I thought I should check too. Uh, I'm wearing a 1978 Rolex 1680 right now, uh, just for anyone that's interested. We have a small polishing motor set up here with an extractor unit. Um, this isn't really used very much. I don't do, do polishing really at all. It's just here in case I need it for something, polish up a crystal, something like that. Uh, we have a heater used for drying components after they've been through the Elma ultrasonic tank. So this is where we uh, ultrasonically clean cases and bracelets uh, and things like that. Over here we have a six bar pressure tester, which is pretty standard for and suitable for vintage watches. Um, I'm looking at getting some electronic pressure testing equipment soon and also some even uh, perhaps deeper dive uh, pressure testing equipment. Forgot the toothbrush, very important uh, for scrubbing, um, for scrubbing uh, cases and bracelets and things. Over here we have the four-stage Elma manual cleaning machine. Basically, we the watch goes in the small compartment trays here. It gets moved around. It gets lowered. We take the lids off. It gets lowered in, and it oscillates in the cleaning machine. Um, I've actually just got that dirty, so let's do this. Basically, that's how that oscillates there like that. And then it goes all the way around through the cleaners, through the rinses, and then we put it into the drying compartment and it dries. Over here we have the Bergeon final test. 
Um, this tests automatic watches to make sure everything's working correctly. Um, at the moment, we've got a couple of vintage Seikos uh, on the winder um, and, a, and a vintage um, Zodiac that's on test right now too. Uh, just some compartment trays. These are what the watches go into. Over here, we have a lovely plant uh, that my wife bought for me, which really brightens up the place. Obviously, laptop. Uh, microscope, very important for doing fine work. We have the microscope, which uh, we can do 20 and 40 times when we're working on things like balance springs uh, and other things. So that's very good. Uh, over here, we have a couple of watches. Um, we have a 6105 that's come in for a restoration. It needs a full overhaul and a crown rebuild. Um, and over here, we have a nice King Seiko which is a 5626-7040. Uh, let's also come in for repair. Here we have casing, uncasing equipment. This is the case opening tool. I'll just put it on and show you how that works. Basically the watch is mounted in here like so. It's brought down and then with the second hand, we, it's hard to do with one hand, but we spin it and open the, the casing equipment. Crystal press, uh, so we can press in crystals. Staking set, all the stakes. Uh, it goes with this here, which is the staking set. This helps us to uh, rivet things, uh, a whole variety of procedures in, in watchmaking. Obviously a phone, so people can phone me and have a chat. Uh, here we have a Horia tool. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools in the workshop. Um, you can also use a favorite, ironically, a favorite dueling tool or a sights dueling tool, but it isn't my favorite um, just because of the way the micrometer setup works. You have to set the micrometer, then you press a lever down. Whereas with the Horia tool, it is already micrometric on its twisting capabilities or the way you twist it is it has a micrometer built in. Uh, these are our punches and anvils. Um, we have the punches here, uh, the, well, the pushes, I should say, uh, and then we have the bottom ones. Uh, so this is used for adjusting jewels, setting jewels, things like that. Um, they, they sit in uh, the Horia tool like so, uh, and then that is put in the top one like that, and then we can wind it down to push jewels in and out. Now the very thing, cool thing about this one is this is a particular model that has the four mil and four mil openings. So what you can do is put both in and you can fit chronograph wheels, you can punch out balance staffs with, uh, with quite uh, precision, you can fit roller tables onto balances and things like that. So this uh, particular tool is absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, and I'm sure for you, any of you watchmakers out there that are watching, you will not disagree with me on that one. Uh, here we have watches. This is how they come. Uh, we have a few watches in movement trays and pieces. Uh, we also have watches uh, here. This is how the watches are split up. We take the dial and hands off. Uh, that's all kind of uh, seen in another video uh, as well. Now we come over to my watchmaking bench. Uh, watchmaking bench and light. We have the uh, timing machine. We have a watch in pieces, um, oilers, oils, hand tools, um, the, the screwdriver set, dust puffer. And obviously uh, this is our tool for setting hands correctly uh, when it comes to watches. So yes, that is basically a brief tour of the workshop. I accidentally stopped filming there. That was a brief tour of the workshop. So hope uh, gives you guys a bit of insight into what goes on here, where it all happens, uh, and what a basically what a workshop should look like. Oh, we can see that my WASTEP certificate is over on the wall. So thanks guys, if you like this video, uh, please check out all the others on my website, uh, subscribe, uh, and yeah, tell your friends about this channel. Thanks, talk soon.